QuickBooks Online 2024. Free 30 day trial set up. Get ready and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are online at the Intuit website. Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. That's at the URL, intuit.com, 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 intuit.com. Intuit owns multiple different softwares, including the TurboTax, the Credit Karma, QuickBooks, MailChimp. I think it's easiest to go to the Intuit website, however, rather than directly to the sub website of the QuickBooks website, because sometimes the QuickBooks websites will change, whereas the parent website of the Intuit website usually looks the same over the years, although the images might change down below, but you have then the options to go into the software you want up top. So then I'm gonna go into QuickBooks up top, remembering that QuickBooks has many different types and variants of the software, including the two main variants, QuickBooks Desktop versus the QuickBooks Online, and then different purchasing options within those two major splits. So I like to go all the way down to the bottom of the page because this page, you don't know exactly what they're gonna be putting on it because we haven't really decided exactly what QuickBooks product we're looking for. So I go to the products at the bottom. This bottom part has basically been the same for a long period of time. And then I wanna be looking for the QuickBooks Online not the QuickBooks desktop. So we're gonna go into the QuickBooks online and then this page might change from time to time, but you'll usually see the free 30 day trial up here, try it free for 30 days. And then this little toggle component has been pretty much the same format for a long time. If you see the options to purchase without the toggle, then there's probably another web page that does have the toggle. You're probably just in the wrong web page because this is the toggle to allow you to be picking up the free 30 day trial versus the purchasing of the software. If you cannot find this page from the Intuit website as we did here, you might just search in your Google search or whatever your favorite browser is for QuickBooks Online 30 day trial. And sometimes that's the easiest way to get there. Now, remember that this 30 day trial is different than the, the test drive, which you can also find down here, usually in the same area, take, take a test drive. The test drive will already have data within it. Whereas if you start a free 30 day trial uh, company to test out the software that way, there will be nothing in it. So it's useful to have both of those tools. So you might wanna open in another browser to have the test drive open as well as possibly uh, testing out the free 30 day trial or as you're working in your company file, I would recommend doing that if you're gonna do that by opening another browser. So if you're in Google Chrome, for example, you might open uh, Firefox or something like that or possibly better whatever browser you have, go into the incognito window. Most of them have them. In Google Chrome, it's under the three dots, new incognito window. I think the easiest way to find the, third, the free 30 day, I'm sorry, the test drive is to type in QuickBooks Online test drive, uh, right? And then search in your browser looking for the one that has intuit.com in it. So this looks like a test drive. It's got into it there. I'm going to say that's the one. And then I'll select the United States version. And then I'm going to verify that I'm not a robot. So that's one practice tool, this tool already having data in it. 
but I want I might want to have it open at the same time I, I have my other practice tool or my other data file. That's why we're in the incognito window. So I'm going to put this in another window for now. And then we have the 30 day trial. We would like to get access to a sandbox that has nothing in it so that we're not messing up our own file so that we don't already have information in it with the sample company and so that the company file doesn't reset because we want to work through a very long kind of practice problem here. So we're going to see the 30 day trial might be something that you can look into for that or possibly a student uh, availability of the software, which might give you more than 30 days. Remember that if you only have 30 days to work through the practice problem, you want to spend a significant amount of time on the practice problem because we'll be doing a long, <laughs> a long problem. But if you don't have access to that, you could follow along with the sample company uh, as well to get an idea at what we're doing from step to step. Now, the, we have the different options down here, the, the simple start, the essentials, the plus, the advanced. These are basically not different softwares. They're basically the same online software. They just have level up in terms of tools, which you can see uh, down below. We're going to be working with the one that they most recommend, which is already highlighted here, the plus. The major difference between the plus and the essentials that we want to practice with is the inventory. So if you don't have inventory, then you might be able to drop down to like uh, the essentials, for example, would be the general idea. But we're going to be working in uh, the plus. That's the main thing. And then if and then you can you can look into the options on the advanced when you might need the advanced as well. Possibly if you're a larger company and you have inventory needs or more people are using uh, the software. But we're going to go with the kind of default, the standard, the plus setting here. Now, when we toggle on to the free 30 day trial, it's going to scare you jumping the price up. So if you get the free 30 day trials, then they're going to charge you $90 a month. You don't want to be paying $90 a month for the software. So if you're practicing with the 30 day trials, notice what you don't really want to do is try to say, well, I'm going to switch everything to QuickBooks during the 30 day trial. And then after 30 days, I have no option other than to continue with that company file. That's, that's not really what you would want to do. What you want to do is possibly run it parallel to your other company file so that you have two accounting systems at least for 30 days so you're not locked into it if you were using your actual data. Or you can practice with it possibly with test data so that at the end of the 30 days, you don't need to continue the current company file you're in, but possibly start a new company file looking for the best price at that point in time once you're committed to thinking i'm going to make the change i'm going to run with uh, the quickbooks so we we're going to go to so if you're going to go to the toggle it's going to keep scaring you but i'm going to keep it on the 30 days then i'm going to choose the plus option while the toggle is on and we're going to say okay then we have the payroll information so you've got the core payroll versus the payroll premium and the payroll elite the payroll premium once again is the one uh, selected you have hr support center you've got the 24 7 expert product support expert review and time tracking same day direct deposit are the differentiating factors that they're typically putting in bold here payroll is uh, an area in and of itself which is a specialty you probably don't want to be doing payroll without any assistance by either software or another party, you could do payroll as we'll discuss in our practice problem. Either if, if you don't have payroll, then you don't have to deal with it. But if you have payroll, how are you gonna deal with it? Well, you could deal with it by using some format of the software upselling you. It's upselling you here to sell you the added payroll component. Uh, or you can possibly work with an outside payroll professional. The big ones are like ADP or Paychex. I'm not advertising for them. I'm not affiliated with them but those are just the big ones. And we'll talk more about those options going forward. This is not a payroll specific course. We'll touch on the concept of payroll, but we have other courses or sections on uh, payroll in and of itself, because that's a whole world in and of itself that has its own uh, unique issues related to it. And it's also one of the things that are most distinct from location to location, particularly country to country, because payroll is the thing that makes it difficult is the influence of the tax law and human resource law and whatnot on the payroll. Otherwise, it would be an easy thing. And within the United States, it'll still differ from state to state uh, to some degree as well. So other areas of bookkeeping, by the way, are just using the double entry accounting system, and they're pretty much the same 
uh, anywhere except that the currencies, you know, will be different from place to place. Okay, so we'll add this one and see if we can add that to our free 30 day trial. So there we have it. So we've got the free 30 day trial, the, the plus and the payroll 170. That's way too much because again, we, we're trying to do the free 30 day, but it gives us the 30 day. So it's at zero uh, at this point in time. So if you do not have an account with uh, QuickBooks, then you can you can basically set up a, a new account. If you do have an account, then you still might be able to sign in and do this process because when you purchase QuickBooks, you're basically purchasing on a company by company basis, right? So even though you already have a company file, you might be able to use your same account to practice with a new company, you know, to, with a new company file with the intention possibly of purchasing, you know, a second company file because you purchased them one company file at a time. So I'll go through this process. Now, obviously, if you're forced to put in payment information, you want to make sure that if you're using it for 30 days for practice, that you cancel it before the end of the 30 days, if that's what you want to do. I'm going to put the company information here, which I'm just picking a home for sale in Beverly Hills 90210 for our practice company file. The address could be important within your company file because that might be used as basically the default address if you're going to be computing things like a sales tax, which we will touch in on uh, as we go through the practice problem. So we'll subscribe. And then it says plans for every kind of business now with live assistance. So we've, we're here. We have uh, the checkout. So it says uh, payroll is going to be the $85 a month, but we have the free 30 day trial. So we want to continue with the trial. So notice sometimes when you go through this purchasing process, it's a little bit tricky when you're looking for the free 30 day trial because it keeps trying to steer you to the purchasing options up top. And you want to make sure that you're looking down here for the button, which might not be the most highlighted button that says, no, I want to, I want to continue with the trial, <laughs> the trial period. So we'll go to the trial and there we have it. Okay. So now we just need to give some basic information uh, to the system in order to set up the, the account. Now you would think that a lot of this information might be used by QuickBooks to give you like a default chart of accounts, for example, and whatnot. But oftentimes, I think a lot of this information is actually solely for internal purposes, because unlike with the desktop version, the online version doesn't seem to customize basically the chart of accounts based on this information that you provide. So, and also most of this information you can kind of change once you're already in the QuickBooks file for those items that do have an impact on uh, your company file. So you don't need to like worry too much about it. So in any case, welcome. We're glad you're here. Here's what you'll do together right now. Tell us what you need uh, to help with. We'll ask a few questions. We'll get started on what, uh, what you're here for. Okay, so we're going to say next. So what do you call your business? I'm going to call it Get Great Guitars. Great Guitars. And I'll, I'll give it a number. Let's call it a number one. Uh, well, let's give it a year, uh, 2024 for our practice problem. Get Great Guitars 2024. I'm going to say next. And then uh, have uh, how have you been managing your finances? No matter where you're coming from, we're here to help. Well, that's great. Nothing. I'm just getting started. So notice this is probably internal kind of information. to So say uh, Sage 50 spreadsheets. Uh, uh, QuickBooks desktop, other bookkeeping software, or other. Uh, so this also, if you put another software, such as QuickBooks desktop or something like that, then it's possible that they're going to recommend how you might import that data from something like the QuickBooks desktop or other software. Now, note that if if you're starting a new company file and we were pulling data in from a prior company file, then we have a few questions and options of how we want to do that. One option would be, I would like to pull in all my past data into the current system. So that has some pros and cons because then you can run comparative reports, which is one of the pros, and you can look at past data, which is already in the system. On the cons side of things, 
that means that you're going to have to have everything set up the way it was before. It might have some problems with it and then kind of fix it going forwards. And if you have a lot of data in the file, then you might be bogging down your system unnecessarily. The other option would be that you want to start a new, start fresh with the new company file. How do you do that? You pull in just the beginning balances into the new company file. You pull in what you need, such as the items, the customers, the vendors, the chart of accounts, but you don't try to go back in time and add all the data that was in place from the prior year. You, you're gonna start fresh from this point going forward. The idea being, if there's a question about a prior period, you look at the prior system, and if there's a question about this period going forward, you'll have the data in the current system, and that often helps you to kind of give a new, a new look in terms of how you're gonna how you're going to uh, manage your accounting going forward. Because a lot of times the, there's problems in the accounting system in the past. Possibly you'd like to you'd like to fix it going forward, and you have to draw the line and say the old accounting system was done as of this date, and we're going to start with a new thing going forward. Also note that if you if you do that kind of system, you would like to have an entire year in one accounting system so that when you do your tax taxes, you have an entire year that you can print from one accounting system as opposed to having half the year in the prior system, half the year in the current system. What if you are changing in the middle of the year? How could you do that? Well, then you probably want to run parallel systems. So if you're starting uh, your new accounting system in March, then you might want to run parallel systems with your old accounting system in a prior software and your new accounting system for the three months from January through March, right? And so that, so you have some crossover between the two. And then hopefully if everything goes well, the new accounting system will be what you will be using going forward from that point. So if I'm gonna, if I said nothing, it would say next, if I was over here, then it might give me a different options to, to see how we can pull that information in. I'm gonna say nothing. Next, uh, is Get Great Guitars your main source of income? We'll use this information to get you started. Probably they don't need that information to get us started. It's probably internal data that they're gathering about us. So I'm just gonna say, okay, yes. And then how do you request and take payments? So this again, probably isn't gonna impact the actual report, you know, our actual setup, <laughs> but it's probably what they're trying to gather for internal use. So we're going to say, we're going to invoice, share links with emails. Maybe we'll, you know, share links by email text, maybe bank transfers. Yeah. How do you request to take payments? Possibly checks, cash, recurring bills, maybe online card payments. Okay. Card reader. I'm not going to do the card reader. Okay. And then how long has Get Great Guitars been in business? So in years, let's say, uh, we'll say one to two. And again, this information probably has nothing to do with setting up the company file. They're just trying to gather data about us. And then we're gonna say next, what kind of business is this? Tell us uh, how your business is set up. We use this to help organize your transactions. Is it an LLC? I'm gonna say no. Now, when you now note again, you would think, how are they going to use this information to help up help set up our system? Well, you would think it would have an impact on the chart of accounts, but I, I believe last the last one I set up, and I keep thinking every time I do this, they're going to have a a better chart of accounts process set up. But every time I do it, they haven't. Right, it, the the QuickBooks basically is using in essence the same chart of accounts, no matter what you put in in terms of your industry that you're in and the type of company that you have. So again, it kind of looks to me like this information is solely for internal kind of record keeping purposes on their side. What would they change to the chart of accounts? Well, if you were a different entity, the equity section might change, for example, would be one of the major places. So in other words, in the United States, and the, the types of entities would typically be a sole proprietor, meaning you're the sole owner of the business, you would file a tax return with a Schedule C as opposed to a, a separate corporate uh, tax return. And in the equity section, you wouldn't be using the term retained earnings, you would be using the term some like owner's equity account or a capital account. 
if you were a partnership in the United States, that means you're kind of like a sole proprietor, but now you have multiple people, partners that are sharing the equity or revenue distribution of the business in some kind of partnership agreement. And that would mean from an accounting standpoint that in the equity section, you once again wouldn't have a retained earnings account. You would have multiple capital accounts, which is kind of an issue with QuickBooks Online or any, most online accounting systems because it becomes a little bit of a problem to distribute the income to the multiple capital accounts. But we'll talk more about that later. And then if you were a corporation, which could include a C corporation and then an S corporation, these are different types of corporations that have different tax implications. But if you were a corporation, you would think that the that the equity section of your of your chart of accounts would then it would have retained earnings. That would be the, 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 the name of the thing in there. And you might have common stock that would be issued as well. If you are not for profit organization, you would think that they might change even the whole format of your chart of accounts and the and the names of the of the accounts to correspond with not for profits because not for profits they they still obviously are tracking money and they're all about money but they try to pretend that they're not so they use different words you know like this isn't it's not retained earnings it's net profit or whatever it's it's the same thing don't don't try to pretend like you're not trying to make money over there not for profits not that there aren't good not for i'm just saying you know, you got to you got to pick the not for profits well uh, over here. But but the, but again, I don't that that's and then not sure. And then an LLC would mean that for taxes, it's like you could be an LLC is a limited liability company that usually acts kind of like a partnership, but it has liability protection, but it could act kind of like a corporation as well depending on what your election is. So we're just going to say no, and we're going to go sole proprietor for our purposes. But I don't think it'll have an impact much on, on uh, our actual chart of accounts. What's, uh, what's your industry? So once again, the industry is the other thing that you would think would have a big impact on the chart of accounts. But as far as I can see, it doesn't really have a big impact. Let's pick one, though. I'm going to pick one with inventory in it. So I'm going to pick all other miscellaneous store retailers except tobacco stores. And the reason I'm picking that is because I want to make sure I pick something that has inventory within it because we want to practice the tracking of inventory. But again, I don't think it actually has an impact on the chart of accounts, the way things are set up. What would you think would it would do to the chart of accounts? If you didn't have inventory, if you were a service business like a bookkeeper or something, then you would think the chart of accounts would not include things like inventory and cost of goods sold, for example. If you picked a chart of accounts that clearly has the tracking of inventory, you would think it would include things like inventory and cost of goods sold, for example. Let's go next. And then it says, what's your main role? Uh, so we, we customize QuickBooks based on your answer. So th- again, I don't think they really do it. They might do some customization with the intro screen to give you some walkthrough in terms of how you should start the intro screen, but it doesn't customize the way you would think based on like this information i mean what would it do differently based on this information right it wouldn't what is it going to change the chart of accounts is it going to change the the you know the the way that the system's going to be i don't think it's going to change most of the the way the system's going to be set up i think it's mostly internal information they're looking for but owner or partner employee other uh bookkeeper or accountant let's go with bookkeeper or accountant next uh, who works at your business? Help, help us understand who's on your team. Why? Why do you need to know that, QuickBooks? Internal information. Probably not going to help us to set up our bookkeeping at all. So probably doesn't have an impact to us at all. They're probably just gathering data. So only who's going so who's going to work at the business? Only the owner, customers. We plan to hire in the future employees, a few partners. Let's go employees, owner, and so on. How many employees work there? Let's go from, let's say two to five, two to five. And so we'll say next. So what apps do you use for your business? Now, when we think about apps, uh, there's a lot of, depends on what kind of industry we're in. So if you have like a Shopify store or an eBay or Amazon or something, you might have apps related uh, to that. If you're integrating with PayPal, PayPal is kind of interesting because you could add it as basically a bank feed or it has its own 
its own like PayPal app, which acts a little bit differently, but it's kind of the same thing. We don't, we're not going to add any apps right now. QuickBooks is a standalone uh, software. Uh, we do have sections that get into uh, more in-depth on bank feeds, sections or courses in the future that we'll look at. And I think we have a section or course on uh, e-stores e like a Shopify, eBay, and Amazon if you want to look at them in more detail in the future. You don't have to worry too much if you skip this one because you can always add an app later. So we're just going to skip that right here and then link your account and see everything in one place. Securely link your bank or credit card. Select the accounts you'd like to bring in. Uh, see what your cash flow looks like. So this would be the bank feeds. So bank feeds are integral. Many people, are, of course, are, are making the bank feeds attached at this point in time. Bank feeds can save a lot of time. We do have a whole course and section on uh, bank feeds. However, it's first best oftentimes to think about the accounting without the bank feeds. Why? Because you, you, if you just turn on the bank feeds and you just start adding the bank feeds and you don't know what the software is doing at all, then what's going to happen is you're going to end up with all this information in what I call bank feed limbo. It'll just be stuck there because the bank feeds don't have quite enough information to actually pull the information into the financials to create the financial statements. Uh, and if you don't know that added information you need to put in the system, you're not going to be able to, to process forward. So, uh, and also th the relevance or ability to create your books directly from bank feeds will be dependent upon the industry you are in. Some industries will be easier than others. If you're just getting deposits from a gig work or something like that, then it's, then you might be able to use bank feeds pretty much to just create your books. But if you have to invoice clients, if you have to track the accounts payable, if you're tracking inventory, if you're doing anything with accrual, if you have payroll on, then the bank feeds are not that simple, at least for parts of the accounting cycles. So we're going to first think about it without bank feeds, although we'll mention the bank feeds, and then we'll have a whole course and section on bank feeds where you can think about how they would fit into your specific accounting system and how to maximize that system to automate uh, your process as easy as you can. All right, so I'm going to skip it for now. You can always turn it on later. So this is another one that's not like a must do at this time. How do you track your receipts today? Saving receipts is an important part of running your business. You'll need uh, them for tax time and for good record keeping. The reason QuickBooks, I believe, this is my thought, but the reason QuickBooks emphasizes the receipt tracking a lot is because they have this phone app that they made a couple years ago that they can take pictures of the receipts and everything. And they're really proud of that. And that was a big marketing thing at that point in time. Uh, these days, a lot of times, a lot of times you have an audit trail already because you're going to be using electronic transfers. So the receipts become really important. expect like for small businesses that are making purchases with cash, because if you make purchases with cash, you don't have any audit trail of it other than a receipt. But these days, a lot of people are making purchases online with credit cards and whatnot. So the receipts might still be useful, but possibly not as important to create your tax returns as they once were, given the fact that you already have the audit trail because you can track the payment that you made with an electronic payment. Okay. But in any case, I save paper receipts. I save my receipts digitally. I save paper and digital. I don't save. Let's go. I save digitally. Boom. And then save receipts faster with an app. Get the free QuickBooks mobile app with your subscription. So here we go. So now they're trying to give you the app so that you can save the receipts, which is pretty cool because you could take a picture of the receipt and then possibly attach it to the bill that you put into the system and whatnot. But it's not the it's not the biggest thing, like the, the miracle thing, like it kind of was advertised at one time, seemed like to me. But you can, you can download the app. I'm not going to get into that now. I think we have another course or section that dives into that a little bit more detail uh, elsewhere. So what do you want to do in QuickBooks? We suggest uh, these features based on what we know about your business. Your selections help us create your setup checklist, uh, but all features are available. So we can send and track invoices. We want to do that. Again, this is probably more for internal purposes because I don't think they're really going to change anything to the function. Notice that everything is available already. So they're probably just tracking this internally mainly, but get business banking. So here's where they're trying to sell you the, the banking 
uh, services alone. You know, they're trying to get some money from the interest. Create estimates or quotes. We'll do that. Manage inventory. Okay, manage sales tax. Yeah, see workers comp. I won't do that. Accept payments, possibly manage and pay bills. Yeah, track my team's time. Yeah, track sales, track mileage. Yeah, we'll, we probably won't do that here. We have another course or section on that uh, specifically if you want to look at that. Explore plans for employee benefits. So that's might be another kind of, kind of uh, upsell uh, type of thing for employee benefits. They might be able to help you assist you with, right? So any case, if you don't check some of these off or if you do check one that you don't use, I don't think it's going to have an impact really on your setup process is the point. So we'll just do that. What should we do first? So here are a few options that uh, will help you get started. We, can, we recommend you start with the suggested feature. Get, get ready to invoice, uh, set up payroll. So I'm not going to uh, set up the payroll uh, now because uh, we, we're gonna, we, we could set up the payroll later as well. So you don't really need to do it through the setup process. Let's go ahead and get ready to invoice. Let's make it easy for people to pay you, okay? So get paid with invoices. Set up online payments to let customers pay you on the spot. So give your invoice template to personal touch. Send yourself a sample invoice to see. So when we think about the invoices, invoices are things that we send out in order for them to, to be able to pay us. Now, there's a couple things with the invoices. Just in terms of the record keeping of the system, the default invoice does fine because it creates the journal entry. But you might want to customize the invoice, giving it your logo and whatnot, because that will make it uh, a little bit more personalizable personalable. I, I can't talk. I don't know what that would, but anyways, uh, because you're giving it to a client. And the other thing that you could do is try to set up payments so that they can, they can pay you through QuickBooks through the, through the invoice with a link. But to do that, you have to have like a QuickBooks account to set up, which I think we have another course or section on if you want to look into that, uh, in more detail. So that would be nice but that's another that's another thing that you would be using the financing tool uh within quickbooks so we're not going to do that in our practice problem uh we'll but we i think we have another course or section if you want to dig into that and see the, your see your options in that uh in more detail so we're not going to set up the invoices here remember that you could do this of course later so it's not required to do at this point in time they're just trying to do the little upsell as we're doing the setup process all right let's get it done Let's go. And so there we have it. And it's thinking, so Get Great Guitars 2024. Now, most of the stuff that we said in the setup process, I'm gonna close this, they might put a little checklist here. So when they say, hey, we're gonna really customize your, your experience based on the information they give you, well, yeah, they give you a checklist, okay? So that might've customized your experience over here, they might have changed the shortcuts, but usually this screen is not the screen you're usually going to be using uh, as you navigate uh, through the software. The things that it didn't, doesn't, let's check out the chart of accounts. If I go to my transaction detail over here and I go into my chart of accounts, this is the thing that you would think they would customize based on the type of industry, sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, and I'm sorry, the type of industry, we said inventory versus non-inventory and the type of entity, sole proprietor, partnership, corporation. But you can see they have a whole lot of accounts here. So cash, da, da, da. We've, got, we've got in the fixed assets, we have all of these fixed asset accounts. This is, seems like an overkill uh, to me. The horse has been dead and they're beating it. They're beating the dead horse. That's the saying in the United States, if you're not in the United States, they're beating the dead horse. But, and then, so if we go down here in the equity section, again, look at how many equity accounts they have. That seems, so this seems a little excessive to me. So, so they've got opening balance, that's okay. The draws, draws would be for sole proprietorship. Investments would be for a sole proprietorship. Personal expenses, that is, would only be used if, you, if you're using it in a particular way. So we'll talk more about that lady, later, lady. And then we got the personal health care. Again, that's kind of a, a weird, you know, equity, depending on how you're going to use the equity. 
and then you've got the retained earnings. Retained earnings being the term typically used for a corporation, not a sole proprietorship. So that's why I think that retained earnings would have been used no matter whether I checked off if it was a sole proprietor, partnership, or a corporation. And then state estimated taxes, so and so on. And then the income line items, billable, refunds, sales. You would think the term sales would be used if you had like a, a, uh, a, a retail store, which we did pick, but they also have the service items here. So I think they're gonna include sales and services as our income accounts, no matter what you picked in terms of industry. We did pick one industry that had cost of goods sold, inventory, but I think if you picked a service company, they still would have had the cost of goods sold account in here, right? So it doesn't look to me like the QuickBooks desktop used to have really, really kind of tailored uh, GL accounts that would be used depending on the industry that you picked and possibly also on the type of entity that you picked. And I don't think, I don't think the online does that yet. It looks like to me, they're not looking to do that for whatever reason, right? They just want to run with this default chart of accounts. So going forward, then, then what we're going to, what we want to do then is say, once this is set up, the question's gonna be, do I wanna run with their chart of accounts or do I wanna just basically make them all inactive and start my own chart of accounts from there are, are some of the questions that we'll dig into later or as we go forward. But the bottom line is we have a fresh uh, QuickBooks file. No matter what your setup process was, you're pretty much in the same spot because your chart of accounts basically the same uh, no matter what the input data you put into the to the setup process is for the most part and then we can basically move forward from here setting up our, our thinking about our chart of accounts adding our beginning balances then we'll enter two months of, of data input we'll do adjusting entries at the end of that period we'll even do budget information and uh, it's going to be great